today i'll be showing you guys how to make a scene for your gfx in blender so yeah let's get it all right so in blender hopefully you already know how to import a rig and everything for your gfx so i'm not even going to explain that but if you don't know how to do that go watch this gfx video right here but yeah let's start off by getting a rig in and yeah and just like that our rig is in and ready to be posed so now to start building the scene we're gonna get a bunch of models and import it into blender and to get these models my favorite place to go is a website called polyhaven.com if you don't know about polyhaven yet trust me it's like one of the best websites it literally has everything that i personally need to make a gfx and the main reason i'm going to use polyhaven in this video is because it's extremely easy for beginners to use it has lighting models and textures however if you do want to take it to that next step you could try to use websites like sketchfab turbo squid and even free 3d and there are also plugins that you could get for blender like blender kit but yeah to keep it simple for you guys let's just use polyhaven all right so head over to polyhaven.com this is where we're going to find everything and as you can see they have hdris which is just lighting they have textures and they have models right now let's look at the models real quick so i'm going to click browse models and yeah as you can see there's a bunch of stuff um in total there are 379 different assets you could choose from and they kind of have it split up into categories right here so for me i'm probably gonna make a similar gfx to this one that i'm showing you guys on the screen and yeah i'm just gonna try to kind of recreate that for this video just to keep it simple let's go for the furniture um yeah i'm gonna do something dumb i forgot to mention this before but if you are downloading models from polyhaven when you click on it click this drop down and make sure you're downloading an fbx file don't do any of the other ones just make sure it's an fbx but yeah after you get your models we're gonna actually go find some textures as well so just go back to the home page and go down to browse textures and here you could just find different textures that you want to use for the floor or the walls so originally i had a type of brick wall so let's go to brick and i think i used this one before so let's try something like this i almost forgot one last thing you want to do is when you download all your assets they're probably going to be in a zip file so all you need to do is right click them and extract all once you extract all from all of them it'll just pop up with a new folder that's not zipped and then you could delete all these zip files for example extract all it will pop up like this now i could delete this one and i would suggest putting all these small folders in a new folder you could just label it like models just so it's easier to find when you're in blender but yeah finally back in blender what we're going to do now is import all the models that we just downloaded so to do that go to the top left click file then go to import and press fbx because that's the type of file that we downloaded once you find the folder that you put all your models in, you can open it and just import all your models. And as you can see, my model should be here and it actually is textured. So that's great. I'm gonna just put it behind me for now and I'm gonna import the rest of them. And yeah, now I have all my models in, as you can see, they're all fully textured and everything so i can begin building my scene so i'm just going to move them over here for now what i'm going to do first just so i can have a ground is i'm going to click shift a go to mesh and insert a plane this will give me a ground to use and since i'm just doing like concrete i don't really need it to be like a terrain and bumpy and stuff so i could actually leave mine like this and now to apply that texture we downloaded you can go right here in material click new and then click base color this little circle and go to image texture now you can open the file of the texture that you downloaded all right so my texture is in uh it does look horrible i'm not gonna lie 
I'm gonna put the roughness up to kind of get rid of that glare um yeah I don't really know what else I could do yeah something like that it's whatever it looks decent um it will look better in the final render so from here my texture is kind of too big like it's a little zoomed in and I don't really like that so what I'm gonna do is go up to the UV editing tab I'm going to make sure it's selected and I'm gonna press A and then press S to scale my texture. Well, to scale the face on my texture. I'm just gonna drag it out and it's gonna look something like this. But now if we do look at the texture, it's way more zoomed out. The only problem is that it gives it like this constant square look because the texture is just duplicating so yeah it really depends on what you want the way i'm going to be shooting my gfx you probably won't really notice that the texture is repeating but for some of you guys it might affect it so what i will say is just continue to play around with the size of the texture like even something like this isn't bad and play around with different angles for example you can rotate it maybe that'll give it a different look but yeah you just got to play with it yourself figure out what looks pretty good for you and then we can move on also if for some reason the texture is not up originally when you open the uv editing tab what you can do is click this little picture icon and it should be somewhere here so just find it click on it and then it'll show well it'll show here but yeah back in the layout tab now what we can do is we can click shift a again and add another plane and what this plane is going to be is the wall so i'm going to rotate it you can hold control and rotate so it rotates evenly that's a perfect 90 degrees and we can press s and drag out to scale it What I'm gonna do is scale it down though, cause I don't need it that tall. Okay, and what I'm gonna do now is add my other texture to the wall. And just like this, we have a texture, but it does not look right at all. So we're gonna go back to the UV editing and try to fix that up a little bit. So as you can see, my plane is obviously not a perfect square anymore. So when I do click the face, what I'm going to do is press U and then press project from view and it'll give me that rectangular look. But actually, hold on, because I want it to be a perfect view. So I'm going to click this to make sure that I'm getting a perfect front view of the plane. And then I'm going to click U and then project from view. And that'll make this rectangle perfect. Now on this side, click A to select everything and we can do the same thing, dragging it up. And obviously for bricks, it doesn't really matter that much if it's like constantly repeated, but it really depends on you. Do what you wanna do and make sure the texture looks good and how you want it to look. But yeah, back in the layout tab again, I'm gonna import the rest of my models that will complete the scene, like the garage door, the trash can, and the spray cans. One thing I will suggest real quick is as you work on your GFX scene, please periodically save your file just in case your computer starts to lag. And if it does crash, all your work won't be deleted. All right, so I pretty much have everything in that I want. What I'm gonna do now is position the rest of the props and get my character posed as well. All right, so yeah, this is not the best, but like for five minutes of work, this is not horrible. Um, what I'm going to do now, which is the last step, is just add a little bit of lighting. And to keep it simple, I'm just gonna use an HDRI. So if you didn't download an HDRI already, you can go to Polyhaven and download one right now. So yeah, back on Polyhaven one more time, just go to browse HDRIs and find an HDRI that you like in that matches the vibe of your scene. So I'm probably gonna go for like a sunset because to me that's what matches best right now. So yeah, you guys find one that matches your scene and then we go back into Blender. 
So now back in Blender, what we're gonna do, make sure you're in the shading tab, go to the world drop down, and we're gonna add three things. So click on add, and you could just start typing. So type in environment, and we need an environment texture. Then type in mapping. And lastly, type in texture coordinates. Those three things are what we need and just make sure they're all connected. Now you can press open and open the file of the HDRI that you just downloaded. Once you have it in, just again, save your file of their project. And now we're going to make that lighting show. So go over to this camera icon, put your, thing, put your render engine in cycles. And if you do have a graphics card in your computer, put your device to GPU compute. And now in max samples, you could put this down all the way below 100 because this doesn't need to be high. So I'll put mine at like 50. And for your max samples for your render, you could put that down to about like 2000, between 1500 and 2000. So I'll just leave mine like right here. So yeah, once you do that, you can click this render view and just as a warning, your computer probably will start lagging once you put it in this render view. So like I said before, just make sure your file is saved just in case it crashes. So let's save real quick and then render view. And as you can see, we have more realistic lighting. I know my screen is lagging a little bit, but it's because my computer is pushing a lot of frames right now. So the lighting isn't quite on my character, but it is a sunset, so it might not shine directly, but I'm still going to rotate it just so I can get a better angle. Yeah, it's not doing much, but for you guys, if you are using a different HDRI, the lighting might not be facing your character automatically. So in the mapping, you could use the Z axis and rotate the HDRI and then the lighting will shine on your character. But yeah, back to the layout tab. The last thing I'm going to do before I render is I just wanna add a light to the TV. It might not show that much, but you know, just, just because I'm going to add a light. Something like this is good. Let's put the power up to about like 500. And yeah, hopefully that shows. Once again, I'm gonna save and then go in render view and see what that looks like. And yeah, it's honestly not bad. So what I'll do now is pretty much the last step before we render, which is adding a camera. So I'm just gonna go back in the other view just to make it a little easier on my computer. And I'm gonna click Shift A, go down to camera, and I can just move it in the position I want it to shoot from. This button right here will allow you to go in camera view and within this rectangle is what you will get in your final render. So once you have the camera selected, click this little orange icon and you could actually control what the camera sees from here. So I'm gonna rotate it like this, probably point it up a little bit more. And I'm actually going to move it because I want a little bit of a better angle. Okay, so this is not bad for my GFX. I'm gonna leave it at this for now. And yeah, just make any final touches you want to your posing, props, or whatever. And you can go up to render image and click, well, go up to render and then click render image. Once you do that, your computer will definitely start lagging a little bit. A new window will pop up just like this. And here is the process that will begin for your final GFX. Right here, you can see the samples. This is your max samples that we set in the settings before. And this is the amount of samples it's at right now. Once it gets to this point, then your render will be done and you can save the image. And when looking at this right now, if you think if there's something that you don't like or you want to just change something real quick, you can just X out of it and it'll stop the render and you can go change it. So for example, I'm going to actually put the settings for this much higher. And now 
let's just save one more time just in case i'm gonna go and render view to see if that did anything and yeah it's a little bit better and just real quick for me my background of my hdri doesn't show but if you don't like it showing you can go to this camera icon again go down to film and then press transparent but yeah let's go and render our final image okay so our gfx is done rendering and yeah it's not horrible to me obviously this was a rush job for me i didn't even change the face of my character but you know i just wanted to show you guys the process of making a gfx scene it's really not that hard but it can get tricky sometimes especially when importing the models but um yeah if you guys have any questions i'll try my best to answer them in the comments hope you guys enjoyed like and subscribe